Today I'm going to show you how I created an eye tracking mouse using just my built in webcam and a convolutional neural network. Hello, my name is Andy, and in this video I'm going to be talking about an eye tracking project I made uh, to translate my eye movements into cursor movements on my computer screen. I did this so I wouldn't have to use the trackpad all the time, um, but also because I saw a similar product being sold that was a head mounted band that acted like an optical mouse for people who were paralyzed. Uh, but it was going for like $600 or something, so I was trying to just implement it with the webcam I already have. Uh, so let's get right into it. I'm using a wrapper for DLib's facial recognition functions uh, called face underscore recognition, uh, which re really makes it easy for you to do face recognition. However, I'm just collecting the features from it. As you can see here, it gives us like chin, eyeball, eyebrow, mouth, nose, all that. But what I'm really looking for, really looking for is the eyeball. Uh, since I have my webcam captures a pretty high pixel density image, you can see that the frame rate is really low for the live output. Um, here's my eye just drawn on. And you can see that we're getting about two frames per second. This is not going to be feasible for an eye mouse. Here I've scaled down the image about 10 times before running the facial recognition. But then, um, you know, we, we have less features here. You can barely see my pupil from here. So what we can do instead is scale up the picture again and then scale up the coordinates of the found eye. We see that this is a lot more jittery. Um, for instance, my eye is like twitching a little even when I'm not moving. And this will be a problem later. So here I've snipped out only the part of the image where my eye is. We see that the box from earlier that was jittering around also affects the bounds of it. Uh, and the portion of the frame that I'm getting is also constantly changing. If we were to threshold this to a 50 by 100 pixel image, we see that the box remains static. However, my eye is now just haphazardly twitching all over the, the little box that we've created. And this will be a problem for our model later. I was hoping that the sheer quantity of images I would be able to grab uh, would overweigh any sort of noise that went into it. So I went ahead and used a library called PyAutoGUI to move my cursor over the screen and just followed it with my eye. Every single time I did this, the script would pull five images of my eye and store them in this file. I collected 2,000 training images and then 200 testing images and made sure that the two sets were collected on different coordinates across the screen. This is so that our model later can learn to classify coordinates it hasn't seen before. Because I didn't have that much of a delay between looking at each pixel location, uh, there are some flaws. So for instance, some pictures are blurry while others are okay. Some of them are darker than other ones even when we're looking at the same pixel location. This may confuse our convolutional neural network, but it will learn to see through the noise. I'm going to be using PyTorch to implement this model. What it does is it runs a 5x5 five five kernel, which is sort of a mask, over the, each image that we provided, and then it boils it down to the essential features and thinks about which pixel location my eye could be looking at. This first layer is the convolution layer, and it's the sort of eye that we're talking about. It collects the features from the image, and then it thinks about it in this fully connected layer. If you really want to know how this works, uh, take a look at this abstracted model, and you should be able to understand. The real question is, how well does it work out? Uh, and as it turns out, the answer is slowly but surely. If you remember the jittering eye issue from earlier that I just didn't bother to finish because it brought our frame rate higher, uh, it came back to haunt me. Every single time the eye box jumped like this, we would see a corresponding jump in the cursor, sometimes by like 30, 50 pixels, which made it completely unusable as a mouse. We reached sub 50 classification accuracy for both the X and Y coordinate uh, models. However, even after adding a moving average to just smooth out the predictions, it was difficult to draw anything. The accuracy was pretty off. And whenever I moved rooms, the, the drawings would just get worse because the lighting would change and the angles would change. It made it really finicky, but I was eventually able to master it sitting in one location at one time in the evening. Here I am drawing an A with it. It does look kind of sloppy. However, since it's not that much different from my normal handwriting, uh, I would say this project is a success. So to end with this video, I have a five minute clip of me trying to write my name, my full name, uh, failing many times condensed down to a few seconds. Thanks for watching. Our code for the project will be linked in my GitHub down below and all resources I used will also be linked below. See ya.